Good afternoon and welcome to yet another episode of Mr. Long Island's Search for Truth and Beauty. My name is Michael Watt, a.k.a. Mr. Long Island, and this week our guest is Ryan Sasto from Lift Up Long Island, and uh, we're going to talk about social enterprise uh, on Long Island. Uh, but first, as we do each week, Ryan, we're going to talk about pizza. And the reason for that is Long Island is such a diverse region. 126 different school districts, North Shore, South Shore, Nassau, Suffolk. The one thing every town on Long Island has in common is a pizza place. Right. And the one thing every Long Islander has is an opinion about pizza. So we're going to ask you, what's your favorite pizza place? And the criteria is if you had people coming in from out of town and you want to really show off the region, where would you take them for pizza? Okay, probably my favorite pizza place would be uh, Little Vincent's on New York Avenue. It, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the go-to spot after uh, you know you visit some of the nightlife spots in, okay. in Huntington, Hunt, it, I'm sorry, Hunting, Huntington Village, okay. yeah, New York I've Avenue. I've walked Huntington. by there. I, I've uh, often uh, been tempted to go in. It always smells okay. good when you go by. They have this special like goat cheese they put on there that okay. you don't really find anywhere else. So it's it's pretty good. Yeah. Besides pizza, though, uh, Tasty American Cuckoo. It's a yeah. uh, a Mediterranean uh, health cafe right in Huntington Village, uh, New Street. Now, now, Ryan, this is strictly pizza. Oh, it's pizza. We, we, okay. We've completely I, deviated off the program. I thought you said it was okay if I talk about no, some of it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so downtown Huntington, which we're going to get to in a little bit. We'll talk about that. Okay. But it's Little Vincent's. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. On, on Roses. New, uh, yeah, on, on New York Avenue. Yeah. All right, definitely. Well, check. Now, there's a lot going on down there, so that's 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 good to know. Um, you're with an organization, Lift Up Long Island. Tell that's us a little right. bit about that. Um, that's a social enterprise that we started, and pretty much our mission is to uh, advance the social entrepreneur movement here in Long Island. We want to bring more opportunities and more social enterprise ventures and training here. Okay, I, I, I'm going to interrupt you. Uh, we know what entrepreneurialism is. It's a mindset. It's a starting up a business. It's running a business. What is social entrepreneurism? Walk us through that a little um, bit. Well, it's a, a variation of, of a, a normal business entrepreneur. It's, it's very similar. They have a lot of the same qualities, but it has that social aspect to it, you know? So um, they pretty much use business and capitalistic tools, but they apply it towards social changes. As opposed to just, you know, the entrepreneur is just looking for a private, you know, profit to maximize benefit to the shareholder. They're looking for a public benefit as well. So a social entrepreneur, he's looking to make a living or at least make a profit. Uh, but there's also a uh, altruistic benefit to the local community. Right. Absolutely. And, that, and that's the big difference. Okay. Um, it's kind of a dual purpose. It's a financial purpose. You know, it differs from a charity because it has the financial purpose of generating, you know, it's self-sustaining. It generates its own revenue through, you know, economic activities as opposed to the charity which relies on donations all the time. And, and that's uh, one of the benefits of the social enterprise over the, uh, you know, the nonprofit field. Can you give um, us an example, maybe a couple of uh, successful social entrepreneurial projects? Yeah. Um, well, the field of microfinance, which was invented by Mohammed Yunus, okay. um, he won the Nobel Economic Prize in uh, 2006, okay. which really skyrocketed the field. You know, it's been, it's been around for, uh, since 71. Bill Drayton of Ashoka invented it, but it uh, really skyrocketed about 10 years ago with him. So he invented the microfinance, which is it's pretty much making small loans to impoverished people who otherwise wouldn't qualify for commercial loans because they don't fit the criteria. Okay. And um, you, you lend it in small amounts. He found that um, lending it to women seemed to be a lot more beneficial. They, they, they always paid it back in, and in groups. There was a peer support aspect of it that if you, you uh, grouped a bunch of women and mothers together and loaned them small amounts, they could use that money to maybe start a business that they otherwise uh, would not be able to if they didn't qualify for a commercial loan. And um, so as opposed to having to pay, you know, high rents for, you know, uh, or high expenses for goat milk and, and renting the machinery, you know, they can now buy these, um, these products and they were much more able to, to make money that way and build their economy that way. So that would be businesses that maybe would fly under the radar screen of a bank or traditional financing. I know the CDC, the Community Development Corporation Long Island, has a micro business lending, or they did, okay. uh, uh, programs. Um, but that's along those same lines, just kind of right. streamlining and really kind of you're lending to the person, not so much the balance sheet. Right, right. All right, so because one of the examples that I always use when I talk about social entrepreneurialism 
is uh, the company that makes the brownies that Ben and, ben and Jerry use, uh, apparently the baker that makes the brownies, uh, they hire uh, ex-cons to do the baking. Right, and that's another example of a, okay. of a popular business model for the social enterprise. You know, a lot of times you see these sort of joint ventures or strategic partnerships between the a for-profit company and a not-for-profit okay. to sort of create a, a product that benefits the purpose of the non-for-profit but also generates revenue for the for-profit. And, uh, and that's been going on for a little while, and that's a, that's a, a good example of a, of a social enterprise. Well, I think it's interesting. I think it's worth talking about. I think it's great for the region because obviously a successful business will will bring benefits to a region. I mean, they, they'll pay taxes, they employ people, they use products and services that keep other people employed. But if you're also either addressing a problem or solving a problem or somehow helping the local community, there's a, a, an added benefit there. Right, right. I think that's what Long Island needs more of right now. It seems that, you know, from a, a global and a national perspective, this field has really taken off and it's really causing some uh, dramatic impacts in, the, in different communities, you know, and, and we're uh, not seeing that benefit here as much as they are in other areas. So, you know, one of the purposes of our group and the social entrepreneur communities is sort of to advance that here on Long Island, get more people involved, provide training in it. And, more venture opportunities and, and people to support that because we feel that Long Island could could really benefit from this from these you know ventures. You well, know? if I'm thinking about starting my business, starting a business, why would I take on what may be perceived as an added burden of, of the social aspect of it? Well, what's the benefit to having a social entrepreneurial endeavor as well, opposed to just going strictly for the money? There's a, there's many benefits. Uh, one being you're just helping the community a lot. You know, okay. you're providing, you're, you're improving the community, which is greatly needed. And then, you know, that, of course, that's going to in turn improve you and your family at some point, you know. Helping the community always helps you. Um, another thing, just from a pure financial aspect, you have that benefit of people want to do business with a social type, you know, minded company. You know, if you're if you're split between two companies, you're going to choose the one. You know, as long as everything else is is you know same quality and all that, you're going to choose the one who you know is doing good for the community. Right. So that that's a, that's a, an example of a, a pure financial type benefit. You well, know? And I think if the potential customer knows that you're the type of person that's giving back to the community, there's a comfort level there. Uh, that listen, you know, the guy must, or the, the woman must be a decent person and a good business person. They wouldn't otherwise they wouldn't be doing that. Right. So I'd imagine it increases the comfort level. Yeah, you get more trust from the cost customers and maybe build a cu better customer base because they like you know if you you develop a brand where you're known as you know the social enterprise type company where you're helping out not just your you know your private shareholders but the community in large. I mean people they like that they'll they'll turn to that they'll. they'll you know, they'll respect that and they'll, you know, so you're building a good brand for yourself as well as a social enterprise. Well, I was going to say, there's an old saying, a positive attracts positive. And if you're doing good in addition to making a profit, because you can't do good if you're not sustaining your own operation. Right, right. But if you're doing good, you're emitting a positive vibe, then, then you're going to attract other positive people, maybe even better customers. Right. And hopefully influence some more people to become more positive like that as well. So it's just kind of like a, That's pretty cool. a rolling, yeah, now, yeah, it really is. Tell us a little bit about Lift Up and how did it come about and what do you do and, and what are the challenges that you're facing in the okay. short term? So Lift Up Long Island was started about a year and a half ago by okay. a man, Jim Komazinski. He's okay. a great guy, a lifelong entrepreneur um, out in Stony Brook, and he had kind of a, you know, a a visionary, he's a real visionary leader type guy. He had an idea to really want to bring social um, entrepreneurship here to Long Island. He saw it benefiting the, the world and the nation and he wanted to bring it here. So uh, what he's done so far is implemented, um, he's partnered with Ashoka. Ashoka is pretty much the founder of social entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, a guy, Bill Drayton, is the president and he founded it in 1971. Is that on Long Island or somewhere else? No, that's uh, in, in DC, the, okay. the headquarters, I believe. Uh, so he partnered with them to bring them here and provide, they have a uh, social entrepreneur training and venture competition program. Wow. So he brought them here to, to start that. And last year we did it in, he did it in two school districts. And this year we're going to be doing it at the universities, um, um, ideally three per year, where okay. we're going to hold training workshops. And then the students and young professionals who participate after the workshops we're going to then support them in um, 
in launching their own social ventures okay. that are geared towards improving the local communities. So that's a big, a big project we're taking on. You know, we're not only going to train, train the uh, you know future, uh, hopefully the future leaders in this in this field, but then we're going to support them in actually making a difference. You know, actually using those skills to to launch a social impact venture that actually does you know make a difference in the community. And you know, a, a big part of the social enterprise field is is uh, measuring that impact. You know, the SROI. That's mm -hmm. one thing that you know. Uh, as opposed to just the ROI, the financial return, we got right. we need to st measure the social return uh, on investment. So a big a big part of that will be measuring that and making sure that it is making an impact, you know. And um, so that's that's a major project we're taking on in in the next year. Another thing is we're actually bringing uh, Bill Drayton from Ashoka for a symposium, a social entrepreneurship symposium okay. um, on October 9th at Stony Brook University. Really? Okay. And we're hoping to invite the, the Long Island business and young professionals community to, to participate in that. And I'll have a panel discussion and being co-sponsored by, uh, by some other social enterprise organizations. Now, it, it occurs to me, having tried to start up a few businesses on my own over the years, um, Part of the challenge of being an entrepreneur, of, of having a startup, is you kind of you operate in a silo, and it's difficult to get out and meet other people and establish the relationships that you need to build a business. Um, and maybe you don't even know that that's part of, of the business part of it. Uh, so I would imagine if there's a social uh, aspect to it, if there's a social benefit, and they join Lyft uh, Long Island, um, you almost get that unintended benefit of having a support um, network to help right. you. Absolutely, and yeah. that's why we would we would love to do something with Links. Sure. And uh, you know, joining in terms of you know, what you guys are bringing together a network of business professionals, and we love to to work with you to to uh, have a social entrepreneur network as well, and we can all kind of grow together and, and work together. I think Links is a is a great organization that could that we would love to do some work with to really... Well, and it's, they're kind of interlinked. And one of the reasons links is short for Long Island Incorporated. And, and the reason Great we went... Too. Well, thanks. The reason <laughs> we went that route uh, is entrepreneurialism is, is key to Long Island's future. You know, there's no major companies that are going to move to Long Island. And the ones that have been here and been successful are getting a little long in the tooth. You need to fill that pipeline. And Long Island has a history of successful entrepreneurialism. I mean, the... The credit card was developed on Long Island. The MRI was uh, invented on Long Island. The handheld barcode scanner. So, uh, in Grumman, Grumman was two guys. He used to, Leroy Grumman used to tow uh, airplanes back in the 1920s. So, the history is there. The DNA is there. Uh, so we need to do more to encourage that. And I, and I want to bounce something off you that somebody once said: Entrepreneurialism isn't just startup companies. It's a mindset that says, you know what, I'm not, I'm not just going to show up for work and put in my eight hours and go home and watch TV. I'm going to do everything I can to raise the bar for my cubicle, my division, my staff, my crew, whatever. Um, is there, can you be socially entrepreneurialistic and still work for somebody else? Is that a possibility or is that? Is oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I totally agree at that entrepreneur, uh, being an entre entrepreneur is a mindset. You know, right. it, it's adopting certain uh, criteria, uh, characteristics and values and, you know, uh, displaying certain skills that um, will make you successful whether you're launching a business or whether you're working for a big corporation, you know. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, an entrepreneur doesn't have to, I mean, you can still consider yourself an entrepreneur, even, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a mindset, it's a certain character uh, set. Well, you, you touched on something really important there because, uh, let's face it, to stay on Long Island, a young, you're a young man right out of law school, uh, for, for you to stay on Long Island, you've seen all your friends a lot, not all your friends, a lot, some of your a friends lot, may yeah. be leaving the region. I'll just say that's another reason why we want to uh, bring social entrepreneurship to Long Island is because so many people are going off Long Island to go study it somewhere else right. and join these social enterprises somewhere else. You know, uh, a lot of the people I know who are in this field, they go to the city, they go to North Carolina, they right. go to uh, California. We don't have it here. So that's another reason that we're losing people here in, in Long Island. Well, that's a big part of it. So now they feel like, you know, they get involved in that aspect and they, they're starting to establish roots. But it's also, I, I think it's important that Long Island be known for something. And if we can be known for having an entrepreneurial work ethic, for having people who are driven 
I mean, let's face it, to stay in Long Island, you got to work really hard because you got to make a boatload of money. Um, but if you can make a boatload of money and do good for the community, you, the whole community is going to be improved. And I think that would, that would really speak well to what we're trying to do here. Right. So Absolutely. I, I think it's great. I think it's great what, what Lyft Long Island is doing. Um, where are you at now in terms of participating companies? How do you get the word out about what you're trying to do? Um, one big thing is just trying to get people on board with our um, to participate in the training workshops and the uh, the venture competitions. Okay. We're trying to get a lot of the universities with the MBA programs to participate more. Um, one of our objectives, or Jim Kaminsky's uh, comment. Komazinski's um, big objectives is he feels that the education sector is, is definitely lagging in the social ent uh, entrepreneur field as well. We don't have a single uh, minor or major business degree in social entrepreneurship and no master's program. The city has two or, two or three and they're all over the country. And um, so one of his objectives is in the next couple of years to have one of the universities actually have a minor or major um, business degree. Um, so we, we're working with the universities to have their students get more involved and participate more. Um, and that's one avenue you know, we're pursuing to, uh, to get the word out there and, and uh, make our projects successful. So half the battle is really just making more and more people aware of the whole concept. And then the other half is getting them engaged and, and getting the whole process going. But I think knowing that there's a support network that could be of assistance uh, as you launch your business. I think yeah. that's very helpful. That is big. It's very big. It's one of the most important things in, in growing your career and you know a business mm -hmm. is to have a peer and professional support group. You know people you can turn turn to. And mentoring is a very important aspect of that. Not not just peer support, but people that you know you can turn on turn to as a mentor to give you guidance and you know advice along the way. You know whether you're a high school student. Uh, being mentored by a college student or a young professional mentoring a college and you know so on it, it's very important so I think that and that's another aspect that um, I think we can see an advancement on in Long Island you know uh, more groups that can provide that type of um, atmosphere and service well without telling tales out of school I know Stony, Stony Brook has really put a priority on entrepreneurship and knowing the people over there I'm sure they'd be happy to embrace the social aspect of it uh, so we can definitely further that conversation there. And I think as more and more people start holding these colleges accountable for the cost of education and the benefit from it, uh, I can see more and more steering in that direction. So I, I think the timing's great. I think it's great for the region. And, and the concept of, of Mr. Long Island's search for truth and beauty, the truth part of it is issues that need to be discussed uh, to ensure Long Island's vitality and uh, this is a big part of it, but the beauty part, and this is why I'm really psyched for the next generation of Long Island leaders, uh, the ones that I've talked to, people like yourself, are really committed to not only establishing a living for themselves, but to do whatever they can to, to keep Long Island vital and sustainable. And I, I think it really bodes well for the future here. So kudos to you. Is there a website, or how would somebody contact uh, yeah, you? Uh, you can go to liftupli.org. Okay. That okay. explains the company. Um, you can go to my law firm website, sastolawfirm.com, okay. if you want to get in touch with me. Terrific. Um, yeah. And uh, if anybody else, they can call here, Blue Chip, or somehow, and I'm obviously, uh, I don't know where the hell you get in touch with me, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, Ryan, this has been terrific. I really appreciate your time. Good Thank luck you, with Michael. this. Thank you, Michael. I look I forward to working it. with you on this. I think it's great for the region. And uh, I think it's just marvelous that young people like yourself are really working so hard to to lift up uh, the whole the whole community. So thank you very much, and thank you thank for your you. time this afternoon. Thank you. This has been yet another episode of Mr. Long Island's Search for Truth and Beauty. My name is Michael Watt, a.k.a. Mr. Long Island, and our guest today has been Ryan Sasto from Lift Up, lift up Long Island, a social enterprise network organization. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.